Kentucky at Tennessee. Maybe another look-ahead spot. Right, we just talked about it with Georgia against Florida. You wouldn't think that would normally be a look-ahead spot, but Kentucky at Tennessee with Tennessee heading to Athens next week. Uh, well, now you just got to deal with pesky old Mark Stoops and company. Kentucky is a 12-and-a-half-point road dog in Knoxville this weekend. The total sits at 63-and-a-half in Neyland Stadium. Latest numbers at BetUS. Guys, this game was nuts last year. 45-42 to 42 Tennessee win, and they were outgained by 150 yards. They were outplay ran by 52 plays in this spot. They held the ball for 46 minutes, did Kentucky, and Tennessee still won the ball game. It was bananas. Kentucky was 12 out of 17 on third down last year and lost the game. Just nuts. And it was at home. Uh, you look at the trends here. Kentucky is 3-12 and 12 straight up and against the spread against Tennessee in the last 15. They do not play well in this matchup for whatever reason. And they have been trying to get off the schneid. Even against those bad Tennessee teams, they just were not able to get over the hump. Against everybody else, though, Kentucky 25-2. and two. So 20 wins, 5 losses, 2 pushes against the spread against winning teams. They are 6-1-1 one, and one against the spread in their last 8 as a 10-plus point dog. And Tennessee just going about their business this year. 6-1 and one against the number, doing their thing. Parker, I'm going to roll with you on this one. Uh, we'll start here. I think Kentucky needs the wide receiver Tavion Robinson to be healthy for this one. He missed the Mississippi State game, but... All signs point to he's going to play in this game, but you don't just need him to play. You need him to be at 100%. The question is, can Levis in that number 44 PPA per drive offense keep up with Tennessee here? Uh, what do you see going on in this one, Parker? This is a matchup between number five in points per minute, or excuse me, plays per minute, and number 131 in plays per minute. Two vastly different styles here. I I know I stole a Kyle stat there on the on the points per or the plays per minute, but it just I, I saw this line and saw 12 and a half and thought, no way. Like the pace has to be a factor here. Tennessee's 66th in the rush rate over expected, um, but Kentucky's 89th. So we might see a little bit more rushing in this game. Um, I I think that both teams kind of have some asymmetry, but uh, Tennessee obviously has the better um, passing ceiling, obviously explosive on offense have been so good with him and hooker. They're ninth in EPA per pass 14th in EPA per rush second overall behind only Ohio state in opponent adjusted uh, offensive efficiency. So very, very good from them as well. And they're, you know, they're 24th on defense overall. Um, they, they really have struggled against the pass uh, without adjusting for opponent 114th in EPA per pass. That's 0 0.220. So um, we saw in the Alabama game, a quarterback who can extend plays from pressure, uh, can can maybe punish them, maybe get the ball downfield. Kentucky is 51st in EPA per pass, 108th in EPA per rush. There's some negative plays factoring into both of those. They're 45th in passing success rate, 68th in rushing success rate. So some of those early season kind of negative plays and struggles without Chris Rodriguez really kind of reflective in those aggregate numbers here. I think Kentucky should be able to run the ball. Um, the question and, and why you would bet Tennessee in this spot is can Kentucky uh get big enough explosive plays to keep up with this very explosive offense. Gary, I was going to ask you, are we sure that Kentucky's secondary is not demonstrably better than what Alabama put on the field against Tennessee? I would say, yes, they are. They, they, yeah. yes, absolutely. They're better than what Alabama put on the field. Um, and, and so, I mean, I think that's a big deal right there is like, I don't know that we're going to see Hendon Hooker throwing to wide open receivers. Um, on the other side of the ball, though, the big deal is can Will Levis work under pressure when he's kept clean 76.9 completion percent, 9.6 yards per attempt, 10 touchdowns when he's not pressured 50 percent completion now 10.7. So he's chucking it and they're getting it. Speaking to your thought, Gary, about about um, wide receiver play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Robinson. But I, I, again, can he reliably make those plays happen under pressure against Tennessee and a defense that's been, you know, um, up and down against the past this season? One thing to look, Kentucky really w plays well with quality possession rate. They're 45th in echo rate. Tennessee's defense, 113th. And so Kentucky's going to get their opportunities. Can they finish those opportunities? I, I would lean towards Kentucky being able to keep this uh, under 12, especially with like some motion from Tennessee. They're due for a little bit of letdown. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting spot. I think you're really playing the pace game here between can Kentucky keep this within uh, within 12. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I'm looking at it. It, it. This is not one that I will officially play. But I would have to lean Kentucky based on the spot, based on how the two match up whenever Tennessee has the ball. Uh, Kyle, let's move it over to you here. Jalen Hyatt in the last two weeks. I just had to throw this stat out there. 
He's got 13 catches, averaging over 29 and a half yards per catch. He has one touchdown for every 1.86 catches. That is the most absurd stat for a wide receiver that I have ever seen in my life. Uh, But he just keeps catching touchdowns, running down the field, nearly 30 yards per catch. Uh, I don't know that Kentucky has guys that are fast enough to deal with some of the weapons that Tennessee has. But I do think that Kentucky's offense can stay on the field against that Tennessee defense. Uh, What do you see in this matchup, Kyle? Yeah, um, uh, first I want to say I think uh, last year's game, shows that maybe time of possession isn't a great indicator of success, right? <laughs> you know, Parker has said that plenty of times in the past, and you, you got no better uh, explanation of it than just pointing to that game. Uh, you know, Kentucky was 12 for 17, like you said, on third down in that game. That was one of the wildest box scores you'll see. In Kentucky, uh, as Parker said, 131st in pace of play. Uh, I think they're going to try to play keep away once again. You know, I think they're going to try to – keep the time of possession as much as they possibly can in this one. I guess my question is, can Kentucky run the ball? Uh, Kentucky's aggregate stats overall don't look very good rushing. Uh, Maybe Gary or Parker have something there. I I don't know if they've been a lot better here in the last three or four games or not, um, EPA-wise, but uh, Kentucky offensively has surprised me that they haven't been able to run the football better than they have this year. Even in the games that Rodriguez has been back, I don't feel like they've been terribly good running the football. Tennessee's defensive line is clearly the strength of the defense, no doubt about that. Uh, I think Kentucky's going to need a big game out of Will Levis to have uh, a chance in this one. Levis has been inconsistent. He's capable. I think the Tennessee secondary is definitely beatable. Uh, Kentucky defense has impressed me a lot. You know, I went into the season thinking Kentucky secondary was going to be a weakness. They've been really good. They've been very good. Uh, they held Ole Miss down nicely uh, offensively. They they also uh, did a good job against Mississippi State. They held Florida to 16 points. This Kentucky defense has been very good. My numbers actually su- suggest I should bet the under. I, I hate that. I really don't want to bet the under. <laughs> um, Tennessee games are capable of an epic shootout at any time. So I'm going to ignore my number here and, and uh, stay off the total. I think I would lean toward Kentucky in this one just because this feels like a lot of points and and not the greatest of situations here for Tennessee. It does make sense. By the way, uh, speaking of rushing yards, as you mentioned there, uh, since they got Chris Rodriguez back, the rushing yardage totals have gone up. I don't know that the offensive line has necessarily improved a ton, uh, but Chris Rodriguez is, if he's not at four yards after contact per carry, it's really, really close. So he knows how to break tackles. He does a really good job of it. Um, and that has certainly helped having him back in the fold. So not having him to start the season certainly hurt Kentucky. So no official play here, but, uh, you know, leans towards Kentucky. Uh, uh, who knows what to expect out of Tennessee games at this point. But heading into Athens next week, you know we'll be talking about that one.